I'm not going to ask um, who dove into our fast for last Monday. I, I just want to emphasize, don't feel left out if you didn't fast, because we're going to pursue this. I've got some things that I want to talk about today to just kind of steer us and lead us in a direction we need to go as a church. How many of us want to take C3 to the next level? Amen. Amen. I think all of us do. We called last Monday to a fast, and, and we're going to get into a little more detail about fasting, but here's how... This is this is how this is going to go. I, t- tomorrow is is Monday. We we were going to fast on Mondays in particular, but tomorrow is is a get out of fast day because it's a holiday. And you know what? I, I'm not going to pin up and be this religious guy that says, "Bless God, you know we're going to you no know, hey spend it with family, enjoy family, eat a hot dog and a hamburger. Don't be a glutton, but eat eat until you're happy. How's that?" But I want you to, this is what I want you to do. I want you to pick it up on Tuesday. Because a week from today, we're going to start adding a day at a time, not up to 40 days. Trust me, no. <laughs> we're not going to do that. But I personally feel like a three to five day fast is, is not out of the question. How many of us in our, in our physical walk, uh, in, in our family walk, in our carnal walk, not in a bad way, how many of us have issues that, that just with prayer, it just doesn't seem to be happening, God? It's, it's, I'm not seeing it, and there's a hunger inside of me for more, and I just need to know how to get there. Except through fasting and prayer, these things will not be accomplished. Because fasting is dying to God's stomach. Trust me, I know. one of the most difficult things that we can give up and just go to, to liquids and, and go to water or just a liquid diet. And it's difficult because how many of us have chips in the, in the, in the cupboard? And i am just be honest with you, she's not in here so I can tell it. My wife loves chips and there are 27, 28 bags of chips. We oh, <laughs> Kids know when you open the cupboard up, there's every kind of dip and there's every kind of chip. Why do you get so many chips? Because I like them. <laughs> and I don't mind. But when it comes fasting time, you go to, the, <laughs> go to the cupboard, which you shouldn't be going to the cupboard if you're in a, on a fast. You go to the water fountain or the... <laughs> so I know I understand it's difficult. So let's get into this a little bit deeper. How many of you want to learn a little bit more about fasting? Okay, so let's, let's get into this. I want to read... This quote from Jensen Franklin that I read last week, and and when I read this, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's, it's, have you, if you've ever experienced a a long-term fast or even a short-term fast, weekly, day at a time, and you'll understand that when, when you say no to your flesh and mean it, and, and mean it, not just, well, I'm going to get this thing over with. Yo, Pastor Ron said, let's fast as a church. So, whoo, midnight, midnight, 1157, 1158, 1150. Oh, pizza. Oh, it's midnight. <laughs> I'll never forget. Uh, we were on, Laura and I were on a fast. And this is before we even knew almond milk existed. And it was unsweet. Anyway, Laura said she bought some almond milk and it was a liquid fast. And she said, it's, it's not, it's a vegetable. Does that count? I said, how could milk be a vegetable? She says, try it. So I tried it and I can't stand the taste of it now. But, but then it was like, <gasps> it's awesome. <laughs> All right, I want to read this quote again. When I feel myself growing dry spiritually, when I don't sense that cutting edge anointing, or when I need a fresh encounter with God, fasting is the secret key that unlocks heaven's door and slams shut the gates of hell.
If you've ever been on a fast, you'll understand that your spiritual senses are heightened. Your awareness, when you give your time that would have been spent for eating and fasting and prayer, God says, I'm going to honor that. To give fasting more significance and to emphasize the importance of fasting. The How many of us want to get, get over the head-to-heart syndrome? I do. I don't want to know God from here. I could read the Bible 27, 28, 29, 30 times. Hey, I read the Bible 30 times this year. Did you really? But reading the Bible is crucial for spiritual growth, for knowledge, and understanding God and learning about Jesus and, and strength and all the, everything we need. But if we just know it in a theological standpoint and not spiritual, and we read it from here and not here, we'll never truly understand it. There's a scripture in Job, and I, I don't honestly know. I know that I've read it because I've read the Bible. We're going through it again. But I, I, it never stood out to me like it, it, like it did this past week. Job 23, verse 12. I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary Food. When we, when we start a fast, it's difficult, but the more you fast, the more you'll understand is I don't, I don't want to eat anymore because of what I'm getting from God right now. And this sacrifice is way more important than I'll never forget the experience in fasting that I'm having because sure, it's great to eat, but I, I love His voice who he is and his words more than my necessary food. And you'll get it. We're going to have a focus of prayer at the end of this. And where I want you to go as, as individuals, but as we, where we need to go as a church. It was during a 40-day fast that Moses received the Ten Commandments. How many of you knew that? Exodus 34, 28 reads, So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. So he was there with the Lord. Oh, he neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. That's another thing that I have read in doing the fast. Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights with nothing. Don't you know that he was right there with God writing the Ten Commandments and how long, whatever he had for tools to write it, to chisel it, for if God was writing it by, who knows? We don't have to know. What we understand, though, is Moses understood that he was in God's presence and eating and drinking were secondary. How many of us cry out to God in the midst of distress? I hope so. Does it show weakness? It shows maturity. I can't do this, but I know somebody who can. And he's faithful. Psalms 42, verses 2 and 3. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? And this is the enemy speaking, where the enemy continuously says to me, Where is your God? Well, my tears to God are my food day and night. Need an answer? Fast and pray.
You need an answer? Fast and pray. You want your prayers answered in a way for family? Have you, any of you have kids? You know, Adam, you've heard of this before. Adam and Eve had no kids, so they had no, really, no prayer requests. <laughs> Life's good. We don't have any kids yet, so we're, we're okay. I've got this note here, and the Holy Spirit said, just read this. You've heard it before. Love, three things. Love God completely. Love self correctly. Love others compassionately. I keep that in my notes, and the Holy Spirit's like, read that again today. Love God completely. It's everything. Love self correctly. Not TikTok way. I don't have any idea how to even get to TikTok. It's not, I don't, I don't know, but I, I see the ads on TV and it's unbelievable. Um, love self correctly and love others compassionately. And I think probably all of us understand that there's some people we can love compassionately and there's others who are like, I love you. Misunderstanding of compassion. Um, we'll have a sermon on that one of these days. Oh, and still, still nine months sober with um, with my addiction to honking the horn. <laughs> we talked about it a little this morning. Laura and I pulled up to a stop sign, and this girl's on the other side, and she's she's like this, rolling into the intersection. She comes out about halfway, and a big roll-off truck semi slams on his brakes. He gets up there, and on purpose, he rolls up to like a foot away from her car and then just lays that air horn on. Ma! You know what? She looked up at him like this and went right back to texting. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. I'm just glad it wasn't me driving that truck. <laughs> Forgive me, Father. <laughs> We watched uh, Something with the King. It's the story of Esther, the movie. Have you seen that? It's not totally biblical, but it's really, it falls really close. It's outstanding. We watched that uh, last night, or I came in and out of studying, and, and Laura was preparing for the family coming over today. But it's, it's really a neat, neat, a neat story, probably one of the neatest stories, and it's true. And it's it's biblical and it's it's a movie and I think that's fantastic when they when they understand that hey the Jewish people God's chosen and and how God worked a complete miracle on their behalf and it hit the box office I think that's fantastic God is amazing in Esther chapter four through seven Esther calls for a united three day fast of all of the Jews of her city. To stop the slaughter ordeal by Haman. He was awful. No food, no water. Hannah could not bear children. The Bible says she, she wept and she did not eat. Soon after that, the prophet Samuel was born. God heard and God listened. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights and was hungry. Unbelievable. Wow. It was in preparation to meet the tempter, the devil, with the saying, If, if you are the Son of God, would you? You know the rest of that. Without fasting and without knowing the Word of God, 40 days is a long time. He was weak, but his spirit senses were at an all time high. Didn't make any difference. His body was in submission. So anything that came against him, the tempter, the enemy, the devil, anything that came against him, he instantly resolved with the Word of God.
Are we there? I'll be honest, as a pastor, I'm getting there, but certain things pop up, and the enemy sees my response to those pop-ups. Do you ever have a pop-up storm? <laughs> Anybody? Yes? A pop-up storm, and it's like, oh, oh, what are we going to do now? I can't believe. Let's pray about it. Let's pray about it. Because the tempter's coming. The devil hates us. Fasting and prayer are necessary and important parts of our walk with God. Being a Christian is fantastic. Accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, forgiveness, forgiveness of your sins, and walking the spiritual walk, it will get, get us to heaven. I don't want to just get to heaven. I don't want to get just to heaven on the hair of my chinny chin chin. And trust me, just getting to heaven is, is magnificent. I want to be well, one of those, and I, and I know you do. Well, well done. My, my good, and nothing good about me, but the good that is in me, Jesus in me, well done, my good and faithful servant. Faithful. And a faithful steward of the Scriptures understands that fasting is key in our relationship with God. How important it is, and the things that were accomplished in His Word through fasting. When we fast, humble ourselves before God, and receive, we receive clarity and direction. There's three types of fast found in the Bible. Actually, four, but you'll understand why. A complete fast, and this is no food or water, under doctor supervision, if God calls you to that. I mean that. If it's for a day, I don't mind. Forty days, Moses, him and God were pretty tight. Jesus. A normal fast is typically go without food for a certain number of days. Drinking a, a lot of water is a must. Just a show of hands, how many of you have been on just a normal fast? A good bunch of us have. When we're finished with this in the next couple of months, uh, with the fasting part of it, I'd, I'd like to see a showing of hands of just how many were able to participate. And trust me, there's no condemnation with this if you don't. It's my responsibility to show you the benefits if you do. Are you with me? Okay. A normal fast. Partial fast, giving up certain foods. And I've <laughs> those of you that know me outside of a fast, is I'm, I'm not a sweetaholic, but if there was such a thing, I would be a sweetaholic. Does that make any sense? A sweet chaser. I mean, you can have a wonderful meal. And be so full you can't stand it, and it's on the edge of gluttony. Lars, you want something sweet? I want a cup of coffee. Those, those everybody that knows me, it's a cup of coffee, and yes, <laughs> yes. I don't care what it is, just yes. But she said yesterday, um, she said if we got anything sweet, and I knew there were some chocolate. Covered peanut butter wafer cookies mm, in the refrigerator. With, and so I got one for myself, and then she brought me one and with a cup of coffee. Anybody relate to that? Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know how I got so sidetracked with that. <laughs> Let me, let me do this again. Giving up certain foods, parentheses, sweets, which is difficult. I know you think that's crazy, but to just eat a meal and not eat something sweet, it's almost sinful. Um, 
That's just me. And drinks, soft drinks, alcohol, in some cases, would be a good thing to fast. <laughs> just throwing it out there. You pick it up if you want to. Alcohol would be probably the number one on God's list for fasting. Daniel fast, there was a 10-day, no meat or sweets, only vegetables, and then 21-day vegetables and water. And that's when we found out that there was something called almond milk on a 20-day Daniel fast. It's delicious. I can't even stomach it today. But, but after you're like 15 days into a 21-day fast of eating vegetables, it was outstanding. <laughs> you can be the definer on how many days you fast what kind of a fast that you do complete fast I wouldn't recommend it a normal fast yes partial fast yes Daniel fast yes they're all healthy doctors will tell you that fasting done right is healthy and it's healthy spiritually too Remember this, it doesn't mean, if it doesn't mean anything to you, what you're giving up, then it doesn't mean anything to God either. There you go. We die to self. We have a wonderful carnal nature, this Adamic nature. God built us this way. And he knew that it's difficult for us to go on a fast because we say no to this. Strong nature, strong will, everything that he built us with, even our personalities and the strong personality. He, he, he built us just like we are. And he knows what is the stumbling block for you in particular and what it's going to take except through fasting and prayer. Every one of us has a need and a want to please the stomach God. All of us do. I hope this is helping somebody. I have some areas that I would like for us to focus on uh, as we do this fast. I'm not going to ask, but I hope some of you, and I didn't, I didn't make it plain. I threw it out there. Monday was set aside, but Monday is going to be our set aside day. If you just fast a day a week, then that's fantastic. The Holy Spirit leads you to two days a week or three days. We're going to add days up to five over the next several weeks, and you don't have to follow that if you don't want to. And you can pick whichever fast you want, but I encourage you to get into the, your, your word, get into the Bible more than you've ever had, and get into praying more than you ever have, and watch God work miracles in your life. Obviously, you're going to focus on family, health, marriage, jobs, finances, spiritual growth, children, grandchildren, etc., this is something I want you to do is make a list of things that you're praying for and keep record of what you're fasting and praying to, and believing is gonna, God's going to accomplish in your life. And watch as you check these off. Fulfilled. 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 God answered. Done. Done. This is what I want... C3 family as a whole also to pray that our vision be complete. Several, several weeks ago, God just prompted me, this is the vision of the church. Without a vision, the people perish, and the Bible is very plain with that. And so this, was, this has been C3 from day one, but the people need to understand this is C3. To build a place for God to abide through praise and worship, both at church and in our daily lives. The Bible is very plain that if you'll build a house for me through praise and through worship, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be C3, but if you'll build a place 
and, and, and praise and worship to the king, abide there. I'll come and build a throne in your very midst. In your very midst to abide with you. C3 was founded on worship. Back in 1968, September, the first, first church service started. Just a little rectangle in the black and white pictures in the hallway of the first building, from C3. And this is why it was even, for God even put a vision in my dad and mom's heads, a des- desire for more. But every place that dad went, and mom, they couldn't find a place that worshipped like they felt like they, that God deserved. This isn't a point at other churches, denominations. It's none of that. It was strictly personal. I want to see God. I want to experience God. I want to worship God like I've never experienced Him before. And that hunger and that cry was why the first building was built. And that's where C3 is today. How's our praise and worship team? Number two. Building, maintaining, and supporting a youth program which promotes, promotes mentorship, spiritual growth, and love while equipping the next generation of spiritual leaders. We have two of the most outstanding youth pastors in the history of youth pastors. And last, this, these, are, these are prayer focuses, okay? These are what I want you, as far as C3, well, how can we pray for the church? This is how you pray for the church. God, take this, take this, take this, and take this, and take us to the next level. Because to think that we're there, we've attained, and we, we've got the, the, the bookmark, we, we can write that off, done, done, done. We are not there. We are just beginning to see an outpouring and a revival at C3 like we've never seen before. But some things, except through fasting and prayer, we will not receive because it takes a sacrifice. There has to be hunger bigger than we are. There has to be a hunger for the the works and the things of God, the spiritual things of God, bigger than we are. Number three, having an absolute hunger for the lost and an undying passion for making Jesus known in our families, in our schools, in our workplaces, Communities, regions, and around the world. This is the vision of C3. The devil wants to destroy every one of those. And we're not going to let him. That's true. The more people that dive in on this and understand that it's from God, the, the more we're going to see God move in a mighty way. And things happen that we've never experienced. Are you in? Okay. Stand to your feet. Okay. Monday, we've given you a hall pass to, for tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy family. I don't want to be one of those guys. And God doesn't care. He's a wonderful father. He loves us. Family gets together. Oh, no, I, I can't. I can't eat. Let me go sit in my office and shut the door while everybody eats. It's not going to happen. Not for, the, not for the food part, but for the fellowship part. Let's pick up the fast Tuesday, okay? Enjoy yourself tomorrow with family, with friends. If you're home by yourself, enjoy yourself. You can fast if you don't have anywhere to go. That's up to you. Tuesday is fast day. And next Monday and Tuesday will be the two days in a row. You don't have to do that, but I encourage you. I've been on a five-day, and I think maybe a seven-day. We've done Daniel fast for 21 days. And every single time we come away refreshed, renewed, and spiritually and heightened with a, with a closer knowledge of who God truly is. He wants to reveal that to us more and more and more. This is who I am. 
this is who I am. Not what man makes me. This is who I am. And you can feel my presence more today than you did yesterday and the day before. And you're going to feel it more even tomorrow. That's what fasting and prayer does for Christians. Amen. Bow your heads. Father, we love you. God, give us strength in the coming days to just say no to our flesh. To fast, God, with a passion, with a desire, God, that we have an agenda. We've written things down, Father, in our in our prayer walk. This is this needs accomplished. This needs accomplished. God, visually that I can see it and I can go back to it. God moved in a mighty and outstanding and a miracle supernatural way. And, and on my behalf, because I fasted and I prayed and I fell before him in his presence. And I served him, God, like I've never served him before. To see those miracles, Father. To understand your goodness. And Father, be, be with people today and tomorrow, God, as they get together for this holiday. Open doors, God, for conversations about Jesus. Open doors, divine appointments for, for family that's not saved, God. And give them, them a hunger they don't even know what it is. Holy Spirit, go before us and work the ground. Blanket of protection around everybody, God, whether it's in boats or vehicles traveling. A, bl- a hedge of protection around your children. C3, God, C3 families. We love you and we thank you, Jesus. Give us strength in the coming days. We love you. Amen. God bless you.